Hello and welcome back. We are here playing Punjab in Victoria 3. Uh, we are playing for two goals. One is the Empire Under the Pun achievement, where you start as the Sikh Empire, which we did, and you uh, subjugate Great Britain. This is thing one. And thing two is we'd like to form India. And these are the two goals for the run. It's coming along quite nicely. We're about 36 years into the game, so about a third of the way into the game. Or I can't do math, it's 46 years. Uh, but still, you know, we got a lot of time, and last episode was pretty big because we fought France and we got recognition. And so now we are a recognized power, we are still a major power, but this is only because we are still in the UK's uh, customs union. If we take a look at the economies... Oop. That's some button clicking that I didn't do. Uh, so we see that we are roughly half of their GDP. Uh, and a big part of what they're coming from is from the Raj. And so at a some point, we will want to separate our ourselves from them. But not quite yet. Looks like Austria has been a little naughty in North Africa. Uh, but so this episode, we are going to be having a nice inflection point in that we... Not dynamite. Although dynamite is nice. But we are trying to pass free trade, but then get on to multiculturalism um which we are kind of waiting for another thing that was a big feature of last episode was our frustration with specifically uh interest group leader that has the bandit trait and so we had to take him out of government he got almost all of the votes and so we are having a hard time making a legitimate looking government as a result of this the reason why we just can't have a bandit trait guy as our leader is this minus 50 percent infamy decay is just untenable we just can't do it uh it's just a really really bad trait this is the only trait that like you really 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 care about um, or need to pay attention to and it's just very frustrating that we have that on that guy um, we are hoping that he dies sometime soon because we could make a legitimate government but only with the industrialists in there and so this is uh, a very it's not fun uh, we'll just continue in we also got shift work last episode and so we are currently like in the process in terms of what we're focusing on economically bringing buildings up to level 51 for the max economies of scale throughput bonus which is really really big especially because we have so many buildings on 30s and bringing from 31 to 51 or 30 to 50 like the range is just such a big inflection point because it's effectively while we are doing this our construction's worth like roughly double what it otherwise normally would be or a little not quite double but it's worth quite a lot more than it otherwise would be in terms of growing the economy and so this is really important for us um we also you know continue to expand down here i think we wanted to annex zulu but the problem is great britain probably sides with them we will eventually want to use this uh this sort of thing as a means for fighting great britain where we only have to fight them and not all their subjects as well uh, but we don't want to fight them yet, and so we won't be going in that. Let's turn on dynamite everywhere. Let's go boom boom time. It's a boom 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 in uh, the vacuum chamber. There we go. But a good PM also notably uh, increases discovery chance. I think we have a decent amount of uh, discovery chance. We'll put this on auto expand. We'll put all the mines on auto expand. Um... But we have a decent uh, discovery, ch or discovery chance is decent because we can discover gold mines, although we don't have too many here. Kashmir gets the Great Molasses Flood. So let's take a closer look at just how many food industries there are there. Yeah, we can shut them down, so we'll get the minus throughput from that flood. Looks like we are making a bit of money, and we, once we pass multiculturalism specifically, we do want to come down in the taxes and really look to push migration. For now, we might want to even increase construction even more. Uh, we've been increasing it pretty steadily, but we can keep pushing it up. Let's just add another, you know, five in a, three different places uh, to our construction. This will be nice. Uh, we do want to find a war at some point. We are floating a little bit of infamy and we we're kind of thinking of even declaring war on russia i don't think this is necessarily the best but if we could release perm and then maybe take uh in particular Uralask is a pretty good province to take uh because the population is not that high so i'm not even sure it would be maxed out um yeah so we would not get max but this is I, if i recall correctly which i often don't i think that this is a 60 oil province um which is pretty nice and it's also adjacent to, or very close to perm which is uh a releasable i think that this counts as adjacent i don't know what this is about this is the most psychotic border i've ever seen why this like spreads into this like that oh because they have part of it <sighs> 
okay. Uh, but Erlask, um, which apparently Orda is Zhuzh, however this is pronounced, has part of, um, gets adjacent to Perm, and releasing Perm would be good uh, for handling resources, uh, specifically for us in Punjab. Um, and just kind of trying to think ahead what are good expansion spots. Nej, we're also damaging relations with them because we're hoping to be able to fight them. Unfortunately, they're cordial, uh, but they are not improving relations, so eventually we'll have negative relations with them, uh, which will be big nice. Kind of not much expansion left to be done here in uh, there. Uh, we could also even try and subjugate the Netherlands. This is, uh, I think, probably one I underdo, because it, do it does give over 25 infamy, but you get both their subjects and their subjects' subjects, so there's that. I think we'll take this, and then if we roll negative event... I don't think we have a lot in South Cameroon. We just really want it nice. We just really want to get free trade pass. We've gotten a ton of ticks on it that are bad. We also want to deficit spend a little bit here. So let's actually come in and put all these construction centers at the front of the queue. Because uh, we do want to be deficit spending because we are recognized now. And then we're going to finish all these in verse chat. Uh, wherever... Are there more in the queues? Sneaking around? Hiding out? Maybe. Yeah, there you are. So we'll put a bunch of those in and look to get the construction way, way up because we are floating. We want to be losing a little bit of money, uh, not just making a pretty nice chunk of it. Uh, Man, when is our next election? This is going to be something we kind of care about, because, man, oh, man, do we really want a recalc of, like, clout and this sort of thing? Because we really don't want... This guy just has so many votes is the problem. Uh, here's our... Okay, our next election is coming up soon, and the agrarian party is crushing it. Perfect. These are the guys we want in government. Um, this is going to be super, super nice. And if we can get a combo of the agrarian and liberal party, this is, like, exactly what we want. And so this will be this will alleviate a lot of our woes because we will actually be able to make a legitimate looking government. It looks like for whatever reason this is more legitimate than it was before. Um, might even be able to take out. Nope, can't do that. But we won't do that. All right, we're trying to get on free trade. Once we get on free trade, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I like all this. Wow, our GDP is flying up. This is, of course, from the completions of buildings that are getting up to 51. You notice, like, for example, the steel mills are going to be coming up next or soon. Glass, this sort of thing. All of these are getting 51. Um, and the U since we are in the UK Customs Union, they can kind of bear a lot of these buy orders. We also want to be a little bit sensitive to the fact that what we're researching we're researching into pump jacks and so and i believe the uk recently got pump jacks or something because i think engine prices were particularly high we've br since brought them back down but um going for engines and steel is going to be particularly nice i think we might even want to really dramatically increase the number of universities we have tempted to do it in the capital let's take a look at the cloud of the intelligentsia so we want the intelligentsia to be powerful and one of the ways you can get them powerful is by having a lot of academics and in the capital specifically you get a plus 50 percent cloud and so having building up the unis in the capital makes a lot of sense no matter where you build them though you definitely want to be getting max economies of scale throughput bonus and so we would either want to build a new one to 51 or just expand this one some more i think we'll just put in another 20 We'll put in another 25, which should be kind of a decent, reasonable amount. And we get open hearth process, which is a good nat spread. Relatively good. Uh, it's quite profitable here. And let's take a look at the market prices, or sorry, the tech. We want to see what's going on exactly. We are kind of pushing into pump jacks, because I think we do have a decent amount of agricultural stuff ourselves. Um, which is not exactly what we would want, but Pump Jacks is going to be... We can make opium. Pump Jacks is pretty good with opium. We're now losing a ton more money than I had thought, but that's probably because iron prices have gone up significantly, if I'm not mistaken. Because, yeah, or this little... Well, I guess that's not that significant looking, but it feels significant. We'll look to import iron from Russia and try and resolve this. Actually, this negative convoy usage implies to me that we might have gotten ejected from great britain's market no we didn't campaign financing um can we spare that to fund the agrarian party we want the agrarian party to well let's do it 
We want the agrarian party to do well. Getting a huge amount of convoys from trade routes. I wonder if something funky happened. It looks like things are adjusting. We went from... I mean, we had a lot of construction centers finished, but not that that many, right? Maybe it was that that many. I think we were at 700 and we went up to... So we added like 180 construction. I think this is fine. We do want to find a war. We've been talking a bunch and not warring as much as we should. And the question is, is what's a good war? We would want to get more, a little bit more surface area into the Congo for colonization. We would want to get Nej for the oil, but we can't declare war on them. We would, of course, want to push kind of our objective, which is to get India, but we can't really do that either. Um, we could try and fight Russia, but we're really not that strong. We're at a weird point where a lot of the wars just don't make much sense. Triple Atania is kind of good, I guess. Um, I don't think we have an interest in North Africa, but we could maybe Dominion these guys. We could start damaging relations so we can. It looks like we do have an interest there. Um, we, of course, do want to annex Zulu, but uh, the UK is going to side with against us. Uh, it looks like if that's the ooh, a new Granada is getting riggedy wrecked. Um, we could damage relations with Venezuela and look to puppet them. That one's usually a pretty good one. Holy uh, Nevada, that's a that's a cursed cursed. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I guess we could go for Eche. They have like decent stuff. We could Dominion them. It's not a lot of infamy. Uh, and then look to annex them later. We can take a save. We're kind of being a little bit. I wanted to so. I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive in this run with uh, grabbing dominions. Oh wait. What? How do we already have something with that save file? Just a second, okay. I just wanna make sure we have everything organized. But I think that going after, you know, Siak has a decent amount of resources, so does Eche. I believe they both have some discoverable oil. And so we'll go after uh, dominion and Siak, I think, here, um, if we can. Let's start damaging relations. It looks like we can't. But we can go after these guys, so let's dominion them. And this should be a relatively small one. We should be able to get a landing. Hopefully no one joins in against us. Uh, GP status, again, perfectly opaque, so um, we'll see what we can do. Let's check our institutions, because we are floating a bunch of this, and we can't do... Uh, I guess we could do this. Um, we do have, like, a quite a bit of radicalism, or quite a bit of turmoil from radicalism, so... Starting to get some uh, some mass migration from France, who discriminates from these provinces here. Free government reform. Okay, so let's take a look. Who wins? The Agrarian Party. Yay. So we should be able to... Ah, they're all Magidus. So if we start passing a law they really like, they won't be Magidus. And we can try and pass multiculturalism, which they don't like... Can you guys just not be so mad at us? Let's see. I think they would like... What would they like? They like this. They like propertyed women. Let's go propertyed women. And then we should be able to put them in government, right? And form a legitimate looking government. You guys don't want to be mad at us anymore. You love propertyed women. Come on, don't be so mad. I mean, there is a movement for protected speech. We'll see what we can do here, though. They are... We really want to reform to do this. And, uh... Oh! Can we put him in now? Something like this, I think, will be good. Uh, we can't put this guy in government, because then we will get a, uh, bad time. Alright, so this is probably the best we can do. But they are gonna go for property and women here. Rubber Rush, you're telling me. Uh, looks like we did lose a whole bunch of bureaucracy off the back of that one guy. Uh, so we will add a couple more of these. At the front of the queue, and then at the back of the queue, we will add a smattering to solve the tax capacity in various places. And also, you know, just kind of bring us up. There we go. Let them cook. 
Oh, this is fantastic. We would absolutely love this market liberal guy to die. No, wait, this is a politician? Oh, we got a new politician. Well, okay, the, the moderate's dead, but this means we can actually, this guy's new, so he's not the freaking bandit anymore. So we could make a government with him. Um, I think we don't want to though. Or if we did, we would want to do it very temporarily. Could we put him in and get... No, we can't put him in. So what we would want to do is we'd want to do this, because then we would provoke the event that would make this boy a radical. And once he's a radical, then we can uh, do the thing. But I think we could actually just do the thing like this, right? So in order to proc uh, the path to liberalism event chain, you have to have all these satisfied, and you have to have legitimacy over 50. So what we did is we just remove reduced taxes to this point, for just a moment uh, to pop the event for uh, Path to Liberalism. And we are gonna do this to make Kapur Mall change to Radical. It's actually gonna change the Rural Folk guy to Radical, which is fine with us. And we want a Radical, because then we can pass Multiculturalism. So we might come off of, um, wait, why didn't we get, okay, we got the Rural Folk. So now the Rural Folk guy is pretty okay with us. And the question is, is will this break off this guy if we switch from this to passing multiculturalism? Like, will this wig out and we'll just get a weird thing? So let's just try. I think this might do something. This, yeah, so this guy gets mad. He might sh uh, shiz him out from the party. Uh, but we can also put the trade trade or these guys in which we want to do because these guys are notably also radical So we're gonna get about double the enactment chance And so this also activates middle managers. So there's that we also get the thought the word the ideal Which uh, I think we're gonna take the university throughput and we get the new Colossus journal entry in order to get that We do have to pass multiculturalism and these guys are looking to rev and they are big upset, so they will get booted out of government. And so, um, is there a way to... We have to have a legitimate government, so we're going to lower taxes. And we are going to just hemorrhage money for a little bit. Uh, and we're going to have a war with Eche. That's kind of why we did that all... One of the reasons why we did that all pause, though, is because of uh, weird business. We're, of course, going to do the double landing, because otherwise we could not get in on them, I don't think. Uh, but we should be able to get on like this. <clears throat> this is quite a big deficit to run for a while, but we're just going to do it. We want to pass multiculturalism. This is going to be a big deal. Uh, I'm shocked, absolutely shocked that this is uh, going to, that this has 86%. It's a little wild. Or that can get to level 86 but I think we're fine overall. And we also, in terms of our economy, we have a lot of stuff to clear. Uh, and having a lower taxes when we are kind of having the standard of living climb up and also the potential for migration attraction climb up, you know, we're starting to get positive migration. We're starting to get mass migration movements. Let's take a look. You know, it's just to us and European countries. And so I think we're in decent shape. We get a successful naval invasion and a failed naval invasion, I think, right? Nope, just a successful one. All right, we just occupy them. We're going to dominion them pretty comfortably here and look to annex Transvaal when we get a chance. What is the timer on this? 87, May 87, so four years. So we might have to do a little bit more fighting. Uh, maybe we go after Siak next. Uh, we are damaging relations with them. They are not helping relations. And so once we get under 20, we can dow them. Experiencing quite a bit of pain here, though, with this. And we can't raise taxes, notably, because otherwise we are no longer legitimate. We could lower taxes or lower payments, specifically for the intelligence agency and the petite bourgeoisie, but we'll never remember to pick that back up. So I think we're we're okay. Can we maybe reform a little bit more legitimately? Will this be? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, guess not. So we're going to just go multiculturalism here. But this is this is the name of the game. Um, Steam Donkeys into Pump Jacks is going to be a big inflection point. I think then we switch back to Society Tech. Uh, especially because I think our NAT spread is finished and we're into Tier 3. And so I think we will want to go either Mutual Funds. Let's go Mutual Funds because we have a ton of Opium available. And then Steel Frame Buildings. Because we can't really afford to expand the construction. So we would be swapping over and deleting rather than just swapping. I think so I think that I like this uh, as kind of our trajectory 
for now. Uh, civilizing mission is not spreading, which is actually pretty nice. So we might even end up going relatively early malaria prevention. Uh, we'll still be behind Great Britain, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, we are notably still... We're going to keep on this plus 25 here, even though we're hemorrhaging money right now. I think we can... I think we can get all this through. Um, we'll see. Just double check that we haven't been booted from the British market. No, we haven't. We just, like, getting riggedy wrecked. Uh, a lot of it is the fact that these are coming on up. So the normal wage is increasing, which is increasing uh, our government wages, which is a huge portion of our expenses, uh, slowly in a pretty uncomfortable way. And this is one of the reasons we want to get... Uh, Multiculturalism, we also have the state funded, but that's only 10k. And the interest, which is gradually increasing, but should be relatively fine. Uh, let's take a look at the construction goods cost. Yeah, they did have a little bit of a come up because we added some construction. And it's mostly in iron and wood. So we could try and import some iron and wood. Yeah, iron notably has increased in price. Uh, we notably can't produce too, too much of this. We could import from the North Germans. That would be relatively productive. Looks like it's not going to take a million convoys, so we can do this. Ooh, we probably want to... Let's take a look at our declared interest. We're going to declare an interest here. And I think we want to subjugate Montenegro here, if we can. Uh, because then we'll have an adjacency with Austria, which will be nice. Let's take a look at our colonizations as well. Alright, I think we kind of got those kind of where we want. Is our war over? Our war is over. So we can start another one. I think that we want to wait and then vassalize Montenegro. I don't think we want to incorporate them uh, in any type of near future sort of thing. And so I think just going for the vassalization is pretty good. Get steam donkeys. This is actually pretty good, especially on... Uh, what is it? The It's good on the coal and it's also good on the logging camps. And it makes money right now. Which is... Uh, we also don't want to swap over all of these immediately. We'll also swap over the tool water tube boiler if this is profitable-ish. And this will help to kind of... The price of labor is going to be kind of coming on up. Um, and we want to slowly... Well, this will actually increase the average price, but then it'll over time decrease the average price. We're just going to do one of these swaps. It'll be uncomfortable initially, but... Uh, it will help long term. Triage unlocked. Hell yeah, brother. It's a big tech. And we want to puppet these guys. So we're going to take a save and then go after it. Tripolitania. Ooh, notably, we could also puppet Tripolitania in the same breath, right? Or we can Dominion Tripolitania if they join. So we're going to take a save. Uh, just so our pie doesn't get fingered. And we're going to look to puppet them in Dominion Tripolitania. I don't know why it says save game with the same file. Weird kind of situation there. But we're going to come for these guys. We're going to go for the puppet. Tripolitania joins against. Maybe. Maybe these guys should also just back down. Tripolitania looks to be supporting. And uh, they abandon Montenegro. Which is a classic, classic uh, play pattern. That's why we did not, before on pausing, uh, you know, put in the war goal of uh, dominioning Tripolitania, which would be something we'd want to go for, but uh, we're not going to get it quite yet. But this puppet's going to be pretty nice. We're keeping, we're going to keep them as a puppet for a long time. They're uh, recognized, so GPs will generally not fight over this. We also get multiculturalism wizards too, but GPs won't fight us over this. Um, they will give us a, an adjacency to Austria and Ottomans, and we can use um, this as a starting spot to invade uh, because they are a puppet and not a dominion, which we would not be able to do the other way around. And it also lets us trade uh, with Austria with no convoys. Uh, for the, or it gives us overland trade in that way. So we get multiculturalism here, baby. And so we will want to get rid of a consumption tax. So we'll remove this one. And then we'll come in on porcelain. And now we are losing a whole bunch of money. But we can kind of increase the taxes and uh, look to do this. We get the open one arms event, which is absolutely huge. Because we get teaming shore permanently, which is extra migration attraction. And we accept all pops now. Um, and now we can just form a like legitimate looking government and we don't really care about a lot of things And so let's just make our government look legitimate. So this will be that And we can look to pass maybe a couple laws that uh, 
property of women, for example, will make the trade unionists not mad at us, and we can start working on approval of our various parties and this sort of type of thing. And so this is a nice, nice, nice inflection point. Uh, we can also put in like war reps on these guys. Uh, and this makes it more likely that they just back down, which would be nice to not have to fight this war. Um, still hemorrhaging quite a bit of money here. So we are hoping uh, to get something, you know, I mean, we still have a lot of construction, so we're building into it and we want a deficit spend because we're recognized now. We just have this concern that this is a little bit too much, um, which it might be. But uh, we should also just have a come up in terms of pops, because now that we accept all the pops, uh, we should be able to attract them, especially because our standard of living is rising. It's notably also a reason to decrease uh, or get rid of the services tax, because now we're starting to spend a lot of more on services for the lower rung strata. Um, still not a ton, but a little bit. Looks like this is recovering a little bit. Not a lot of it, though. As we get a bunch of mass migration, labor problems should be solved. This will also employ, like, all these buildings should have... Uh, the qualifications problem should kind of go away after a little bit. Um, you know, because we're not discriminating against pops, uh, they can come up and have become officers. And uh, they don't have their labor prices so depressed as well. Okay. So let's look to land. And we're just going to land with two groups because uh, we have the feeling that the negative penalty might make it landing hard. But of course, once we occupy, we can very quickly just land. I think we are we would be okay with passing protected speech as well after this. Civilizing mission is unlocked, so we will increase our colonial affairs institution. We notably do not have malaria prevention. It looks like the US, or sorry, the US, the UK does not either. I think we want the trade unionists to gain clout, even though they're not happy with us right now. We would love for them to come up to 20% clout and give us their double bonus. We are gonna be passing two laws in a row that uh, make them happy with us, and their bonuses are extremely good. We're gonna go property women into protected speech, I think. Especially because we're behind on tech, protected speech is much more attractive. Can we put in another consumption tax if we do this? No. Big Sag. What are we spending all this on? Maybe we need to get off of promote social mobility here. It is like roughly half of our country, but uh, ooh, we are having a little bit of a problem here as well. Let's try and fix that. But it is close to half of our population, but is... Uh, decreasing more and more and if we get rid of this we can put in another consumption tax i'm just not sure but look at that social mobility fly just it's such a high percentage of our pop that this uh this one seems like reasonable unfortunately like i wish it uh we get a failed naval invasion and it's a successful one so we just get an occupation here, and so we should enforce on them right quick. Uh, being next time is really nice. We started, I think, at 128 mil GDP. We're having a little bit of a stall out here, but I think I think we can build through this. Uh, especially, ooh, uh, like, watching this standard of living just climb up is uh, a bit uncomfortable because we know that the normal wage is also probably climbing up uh, relatively quickly as well. And so... Yeah. So part of it is also us, uh... We have to... Let's see how much peasants we have. Yeah, we're starting to run out of peasants. In a general sense. Punjabi, woman who travels. So we can take an Akhman chance, or we can get... Uh, let's just take the, the regular enactment chance. We do want to get on property of women. We're actually relatively close to feminism. Um, I guess we're not going to get it for a little bit, but... This is starting to look a little bit better. It's it's not rebounding at the speed I would like. But maybe once we finish these railways here, since we only have 90% 97% access, that will be kind of what pushes it. This is going up to let's just make sure that that goes up to 51 instead. Uh, we'll add a rail. 
unfortunately we do have some problems because we're inside of a market we're gonna add some there because we're gonna need steel in the near ish future yikes this one's a little awkward we're gonna add some here and these are 51ing could 51 these so this is 26 31 41 51 We'll add some rails. Got a lot of rails coming in. Are we paying a lot on subsidies? We're paying a pretty solid amount on subsidies. Unfortunately, we can't push uh, the price of transportation super, super well. But let's take a look at all of our... Maybe we missed something here in all these. We did swap over, starting using some of the things. I guess we missed explosive shells. There's that. Mm. I think we need to get... Yeah, I don't know. It's just pain, man. Uh, we're going to put these opium plantations, though. I think we might put them on auto-expand, because we are reaching a point where they actually become good. Relative to other stuff. But, yikes. I think... Let's just take a look at eastern Afghanistan. So, if we can specialize here in anything, we would want opium, so we'll put that down there. And just look to just look around a little in that regard i think we'll put it down here as well and uh what about here so here we already have a lot of wheat farms so we'll just leave this as is have a lot of wheat here just the places that already are pretty opium dense we'll put in for them to auto expand on the opium i think we might want these to go rice uh these are generally a little bit efficient. It looks like they're not even able to employ, though, but we'll see if they can get some migration now that we've got uh, multiculturalism. Should help facilitate it, right? Yeah, look at this migration attraction. Big up on the migration attraction, especially with the tr uh, intelligentsia both powerful and happy. We're getting so many percentage modifiers, so let's take a quick look at the capital which should have some of the best ones. We're getting 10% from being a major power, 50% from intelligentsia, and 25% from teeming shores, which is the event. Uh, we are getting negative migration right now. Why is this not as high as we would like? I mean, they're migrating to the other places because the other places have more jobs, I assume. So in here, they have the SOL, but they have more unused, they have more available employment, and they have all these same modifiers, as well as trade center modifier, which is a big one. So in places where you have trade centers, you kind of do want to build a little bit high. But we are coming on up. I think we started with 128 mil, right? So this is pretty fast to add like another 25 mil to the GDP. If we take a look at the GDP chart rate. You know, we're catching up on some of these guys. Reinforced concrete is going to be... Now, 15% construction center building throughput is really good, but it is going to be a little bit uncomfortable uh, right now because we can't, we aren't necessarily wanting to uh, do more stuff. But we have a movement for universal suffrage, so I think we're going to go it. It's also going to make some people happy, some people sad, but it will appease the these guys. And we're looking to get the big bonus out of the trade unions because workforce ratio and th extra throughput are incredibly strong. And we still have loyal industrialists, so this is... Really the best of all worlds, uh, except we don't care about landowners, but so that'll happen and we'll get on universal suffrage, which makes it a lot easier to have the trade unions powerful who give really strong bonuses. You see that uh, with that 50%, 15% throughput, we got kicked over at 1k construction and so now we are deficit spending a lot. And I don't know, I don't think we can sustain this level. Uh, but we also are pulling in migrants but we might need to wind down some construction centers. And so let's take a look at what we have. And we're gonna wind down, in particular, uh, oh, we can't wind down through this panel, it doesn't exist. Uh, we can only wind down where we do not have uh, them maxed out. And so we're gonna take a look at Kiva, uh, Maza Duran, and also Turkmenia. We're gonna wind down a few construction centers in these which will free up employment for other stuff. And I I mean, this is just kind of like putting a little dent in the thing, but it's gonna bring us back down under 1K construction, which I think is a little bit more manageable here. Uh, we have 
the construction goods are just really expensive. The, uh, one of the huge problems for us in particular is that we can't actually drive down the price of iron very easily because we don't have a lot of places where we can build iron that don't have really bad construction, like uh, efficiency negative modifiers. So like these guys, I guess we can incorporate these guys so that our uh, thing would apply, but they have a bunch of turmoil. So they have minus 50% state construction efficiency. So, I mean, the auto queue is choosing to build iron mines here though anyways, but we can't really uh, try and bring down the price of uh, iron, which we don't necessarily want to do. We Well, we do want to do it because it, most of it's not us. We, we want cheap iron in the market. If we had a bunch of iron mines, we would not want cheap iron in the market just to make our construction cheaper. Oh god, we also have these unis. Jesus. This is going to be uncomfortable. Let's actually, let's cancel. Like, uh, actually the unis already have so much progress on them. And I do want them, but this is gonna, we maybe need to reevaluate what we're going after. I mean, I think this is it. I think these are the plays. I just think, ugh. I think we need, yeah, we need to decrease construction a little bit more. So we're gonna do that. We live in a society. Also, once we get the trade unions happy, that will also really help. Once we get to the next notch up. We live in a society. Uh, boiler explosion. We'll do that one, which will give us the second level, which gives us extra workforce ratio. This is an equilibrium one, though, so it doesn't instantly apply, but it long term is extremely strong. Yikes, we're just hemorrhaging. We're bleeding out here. I mean, we could increase taxes, but this is not the way when you are running out of peasants. Let's take a look at our peasants. Well, we still have some peasants. I mean, just on a temporary kind of thing, we could look to increase taxes. I, do we have the tech for... I always forget when you get graduated taxation, but we might have the tech for it. Let's take a look. Socialism is what we need, so we will want to go that eventually, but we get pump jacks. And I think we have enough engines in the market to absorb us swapping everything to pump jacks. But uh, this is going to make a lot of our businesses a lot more profitable. Unfortunately, they're owned by landowners still. And so it won't uh, lead to a huge investment pool transfer, but it'll be a little bit. It'll help bring down this construction prices. I'm going to put this on auto expand in regards to the rubber. So that should, maybe we get the investment pool transfer cranking up a little bit here. Um, you know, because these buildings are a lot more profitable. This pump jack nearly doubles the output of all the buildings. Uh, just, or I think it roughly doubles the output just at the expense of extra engines. And so this is, you know, I guess it's like making a 100K difference here on our line overall. Roughly, when you consider all things like the extra dividends, taxes, and the investment pool transfer and all this. And so this is quite nice. Um, I'm about to get universal suffrage here, which should make us more legitimate. So we can try and push bonuses a little bit better. Uh, and by about to get it, I mean, of course, of course, of course. This isn't a very populous area, so we will just do this one. If it was the capital, if it was... You know, Punjab, we definitely would do it, but it's not. I mean, look at this line, though. That is Pump Jacks right there. That is Pump Jacks. Pump Jacks is an absolutely huge deck. And it's going to be really huge once we get this, too. Yep, yep. This is, uh, I think the story of this episode is just going to be massive tacking. Uh, massive tech inflection points, really. Um, I mean, I'm so excited about these techs, I'm forgetting to declare wars. I mean, we want to annex Zulu, we can't. Uh, because Great Britain joins against us. Um, we could go after Portugal here, but we kind of lost an opportunity to gain another front here. We could go after Portugal here, but we kind of already have the fronts here and here. I mean, this would... I don't think this is worth... I kind of want to take this. I want to fight Russia. Don't want to fight Russia's allies, though, but we can declare war on uh, Uli Zhuzh uh, in order to avoid it. 
We could also rival some of these guys and maybe try and get an alliance. Actually, let's take a let's take a little bit of a think. A macro level think, uh, as it were. Are we remotely close to getting alliances with anyone that is powerful? Triple Atania, Venezuela. Doesn't look like it. How close would we be to getting an alliance with Austria? Like, we would not mind swapping to Austria's customs union. Of course, we can't do that because, for a variety of reasons, we can't do that, really. Um, but how close are we to an alliance? They're ranked bigger than us. Let's improve relations. I mean, Austria's also not that strong this run, which is, like, the first run where we haven't had absolutely bonkers Austria. Uh, we could also look to put in regulatory bodies. It's kind of a little bit far from that, maybe. Also, that's not a war. Let's find a war that's productive. Uh, I think Siak would be good. So we could Dominion Siak. We'll take a little bit of a save. This is kind of a nice one. Let's Dominion Siak. Uh, the other guy's Dominion, so we don't actually have a front there. But a uh, decent amount of oil is there. This is a fine war. We live in a society, etc. Mostly, etc. Probably don't need these government admins, yeah? So we'll kick them to the back of the queue. And then I guess we put in other ones on them, like ban slavery and uh, open market. And then war reps, and then they can back down. If they want. Is that a someone joined or is that gold rush? Okay, got it. Mine, it's all mine. Mine, it's all mine. But yeah, nice come up here. Cranking up GDP by quite a lot here. Or we have. Universal suffrage is coming in. Just, I mean, I think we're fine. Paying a lot in interest and subsidies as well now. We could look to, yeah. Russia sides with Sikkim against Great Britain. We'd love to see it. This is getting occupied. And this is a big tech as well. Let's see what Russia even wants here. They're just nothing, they're just doing it for free? Okay. Out of the goodness of their heart. But we will get to swap over our PMs and this is the most annoying PM swap. Uh, also, this notably lies to you because if you're not on full employment, it, it does the calculation as if you could get full employment, which is not always the case. Uh, we're going to turn it on everywhere except for in the arms industries for uh, reasons. But the important ones are it's going to be swapping the ownership to be partially owned by capitalists in the areas that are currently just completely aristocratic owned. So this should dramatically, uh, positively affect the investment pool transfer. Uh, I think it was 276k, but we also have been watching that number move. As we've been doing this, I think. Maybe it's not moving until we unpause. 276. Thought I saw this number move. And Steam Donkeys is pretty good, so I think we'll actually turn on Steam Donkeys here and look to slowly turn it on in a bunch of places. We'll switch this to publicly traded, and now that we have publicly traded, I'm gonna turn this on, which is gonna depress the price of fertilizer, unfortunately, which will make the boom booms. Actually, let's not. I think that keeping that off, it might be good, like the entire game, just keeping it off. 276K, let's see what it is after Monday. We're looking at the temporary investment pool transfer. The buildings do have to employ up a little bit. Maybe next Monday? The numbers should get cranked up a little bit. Booming Industries, you're telling me. Uh, 
Although this throughput will be a confounding variable, right? Oh, it goes down? Terrible. That's not how that works. A 285k, it looks like, is now telling us down in this tooltip, but not in the other one. 286k. Might have the confounding variable from the increased mines, though. That's one of the problems with any type of test you do. There's usually multiple variables, and you just have to, like... What we should have done is we should have uh, just taken a look at a specific place and then turned it over and then looked at what the difference was. We get a fight with Siak, so let's go, baby. And uh, because we are no longer discriminating, you might notice something. We have seven boats here. Uh, we can finally get boats. So these places are recruiting up in terms of boatage, which is going to be a big deal for us, or a big positive deal. Still want to annex these guys. UK wants to thumb our pie over it, though. We live in a society. Okay. I think that we might declare on Russia after this. It'll be, well, just, we're in a little bit of a precarious spot where I don't want to quite do it. Uh... So, if the Intelligency is under 30% clout, we'll do this. Or 20%. So we will do this option. Because we want to get the Intelligency. We want to make sure that they stay powerful. And the rural folk are mad at us anyways. So let's do this anyways. They are placated though. We do have room for institutions. Yeah, we just are so overbuilt on this. I don't think there's anything we can spend it on yet anyways. As soon as we do finish the steel frame building, we could do the skyscraper uh, one. Or the skyscraper, like, look, -a -re look around, whatever it's called. Looks like we're gonna get another landing in. Push these guys, dominioned. This one's, like, also super nice because it gives us a native interest here as well, so we should have, yeah, we have another interest. We can declare, let's declare down here, just in case we want to do something in South India. Probably not. Uh, but we could, like, declare on France to release Mysore, which would be kind of a good start towards starting to release or conquer all of these little countries. Baroda is the one we want. Let's keep the relations with Baroda bad. Russia, of course, does occupy this monstrosity of a thing. Tabriz. South India interest is active now. And we are starting... We got the red number now. We might need to wind down construction yet again. I'm not a huge fan of that. I really want to try and build into this. I just... Maybe we just can't do it. What's our population looking like? I mean, we're creating jobs here, yo. Let's just take a look at some... So electricity is uber expensive. Wood's really expensive, but we can't really do much about the wood being expensive, you know? This is what we can do. Uh, we are not going to pay for that. You'll have to figure the canning thing out yourself. We are 51ing a whole bunch of stuff, though. And we're starting to finish these 51s. And so let's take a look. Well, we have a, there's a high demand for silk, and we now are on publicly traded and this sort of thing on silk. So we actually do not mind producing silk. And we can produce silk. And they're very profitable. So maybe we produce a little bit of silk here uh, in the capital. We still should be getting the max modifier for this thing. And we should be also be able to build multiple industries up to 51 here. Dyes are also really profitable here. Let's do the silk. Let's actually 51 the silk. For max throughput. Because it is publicly traded. And silk is real expensive. So this should be, this should be okay. So 25, 35, 45... 51. We'll add a couple railways at the front. Uh, the 90% is also wrecking us. And 
has this been going on? I think this has been going on a while. And so we might be thinking, maybe it's time to leave the customs union soon. So... Maybe, yep, maybe it's, uh, we've grown out of this a little bit. This might not be the best way to break it, though. But let's see who's a rival with the UK, because we're going to need to fight the UK. France. Great Britain considers them an, a rival. France, Germany... Russia. So let's try and get good relations with these guys. Let's rival Spain. Just knowing that long term we will want their help against uh, the UK. We get universal suffrage, which should help a bit with the legitimacy problem. Can we make something more legit looking? Not really. Blah. It's not helping as much as we'd like. Uh, we do want to abolish child labor. We do want to get... Poor Laws is a nice... Poor Laws can give us the bonuses from everyone. So I think I like Poor Laws. Also, private health insurance would at least give us the bonuses from the, those guys. But I think we just go Poor Laws here because everybody likes that, except for the people we really don't care about. And so now we're getting this bonus for workforce ratio and this bonus for capitalist contribution efficiency. So we see that this kind of make a big difference over here, big-ish difference. Now, can we annex uh, Zulim without getting wrecked by Great Britain? Or maybe this is the way we want to get out of Great Britain's market. Because they're a little preoccupied with Russia, no? I guess maybe not. Looks like Russia's unoccupied, which implies the war is over. <sighs> hmm. I mean, maybe we just kind of sit tight. The economy is just absolutely hugely popped off, though. Like, plus 50 mil. In terms of the GDP. Uh, but uh, we are struggling in terms of the government balance a little bit. Uh, this is also going to be a big one. Big tech. Let's take a look at our infamy. We want to do relatively large. Uh, we do have bad relations with them. We can dominion them. I think this will be good. We'll take a save. We'll dominion them. Uh, notably, Tr Tripolitania does have access to quite a bit of oil. Uh, which is why we're going after them. Uh, Nej would also be decent for the same reason, but we have good relations with them, so we can't. And so this will be a fine, <clears throat> fine one to go for. Who can we sway? Austria, interesting. We'll want to ban slavery and uh, open their market as well. We'll just put those in and kind of hope that they back down. Kind of don't feel like doing this landing. This is starting to come into a much better looking number. Um, and if we can decrease the cost of... Uh, we just like... It's... Our kingdom for some wood, man. Well, we are expanding a bunch of things. Let's make sure we don't have places with... Uh, not access to the market. No, we don't. But this is 90% now, or 92, is a problem. I mean, we could just straight up leave. Just air unceremoniously leave, not even try and leave through a war. The thing is... is Ooh, I just, it makes, I think that that might be really bad for our economy. You know what we need before we leave, though, is a lot of convoys. So maybe we do some of this. Just start adding convoys now. 
We can't go industrial port yet. Maybe that's actually the inflection point, right? We Once we get ironclad, then we can leave. And then breach floating artillery is also a big one here. Um, but we, we really definitely want ironclad. Okay, I think I like this. Because then we can go... Ugh, intelligentsia no longer powerful. This is not ideal. Not what we wanted. Happy with the agrarian party getting some momentum. We generally are trying to pass stuff that they like. <sighs> Deep breaths. Oh, we did want to go after Messina. Right? And, uh, do they still have a defense pact with the UK? They do. So maybe this is how we get out of the UK's customs union. We just down Messina. Maybe that's a little bit too, like, harebrained, like, right? Maybe we should just leave all natural and do our own thing, become a great power. Um, something like this. We are about to crank up a ton of these plantations, though. Not going to put them on auto-expand, but expecting them to be wildly profitable. Um, the problem is, is their ownership is... Uh, there's a lot of aristocratic ownership, but also just pumping up the GDP, which is what this does, is becomes a lot better as you have more and more of the minting techs, and so we will start... Uh, this will start driving up minting, even if it's not driving up the investment pool. Um, and so... And it's also driving up the investment pool quite a bit because publicly traded, you know, is a thing. And then we're also closing out the throughput bonuses, which are really strong, uh, to max out the economies of scale. We also do have the Indus Valley. Uh, and also, uh, I think that we really would want to focus more, more on the plantations in here. So we're kind of doing that. Um, like, we have this one going for rice, I think. And it's auto-expanding. For whatever reason, it's actually auto-expanding. I thought it needed more. Or maybe this is just the auto-queue that's doing this. We can probably finish these out. But these will give the most wheat. And so, uh... The problem with rice farms is it deletes subsistence farms that are really, uh, needed or important. Yeah, just a bit tense on the money. Steel frames is going to be a big one, though. We get a weird split, which of course is going to riggedy wreck us. Uh, let's also recruit generals. We, I know we have a bunch of guys in reserve. I know we have a bunch of guys. Where's our guys in reserve? Oh, they're in the army, of course. We live in a society. All right, uh, let's recruit that guy. And blah. I mean, I suppose this guy's okay. And let's do that and that. Cool. Of course, we get bricked, naturally. So we'll just try and get in through here. Big unfortunate, but not too big. Well, I guess small unfortunate. It's kind of annoying. We have, like, an army that can definitely take them, but since they we don't have two armies and the front split's funny, we just get riggedy wrecked. Yeah, the story of this episode is going to be, like, pumping up the GDP by 70 mil. Was that, like, 128 at the start? And so, what was that, 64? It's 128, so 80. More than, adding more than 50% to the GDP here. It's pretty strong. Of course, this is on the back of some serious spending. Um... We'll do this one, and then we will uh, increase the institution back up. The principle of population. Uh, we don't absolutely need this one, so we'll come off of this, and then look to pass something. Well, let's reform the government, right? And now we're hyper-legitimate, because we have a really caked up agrarian party. Now we want to make these guys happy, and these guys happy would, would also be okay. So we're definitely going to try and do something. The question is, what are we going to try and do uh, to do this? Uh, we could go public health insurance. Don't really like that. I like private better, but 
We don't have the right guys in charge for that. We could do compulsory primary school. I don't hate this. The industrials really don't like it though. Uh, and it will radicalize them. But if we do this, will they get... No, they'll still get upset. We could do regulatory bodies. This will also upset the industrialists the same amount. We could go for protected speech. Do like this. We do want more gnat spread. And I think I think I like protected speech here. Especially because it doesn't make the industrialists mad. Uh, the industrialist bonus is pretty good. And they're a little p pissed at us for some other things. And so now we can go this. And of course we will be getting the big bonus. The big, big bonus. 20% workforce ratio and 20% manufacturing throughput. Without making these guys too upset. Maybe we can find a place for them in Gov. But they kind of have the opposite ideas. So there's all that noise. A lot of market liberals right now. Which is a little bit strange. We will not risk it. We will not risk it again. And we will just mobilize and send a guy over. Red Rover. Red Rover. And we gotta get rid of some authority spends. So we can get rid of the porcelain tax. Which I kinda don't want to do. Or we could get rid of social, promote social mobility, which again, kind of don't want to do. Or we could just take minus five oppo interest group approval, which kind of don't want to do. So really just wish we had a little bit more authority. And so, uh, will this pop? Don't look like it. But we got to part with one of these things. I'm guessing it's promote social mobility because we are bleh, doing something that increases the tech spread anyways. We were never wanting to have that the whole game. Ugh. So we're just going to push through here. And force on Tripolitania. And then probably call it an episode. It's been a little while. We have notably pulled down some pretty big techs. And this GDP pop-off has been nuts. Uh, I think is the biggest thing to, to mention. We went from 128 to like... We've added over 50% to the GDP, so this is really, really, really nice. If we take a look at, for example, you know, relative to other countries, we are having a bit of a come up here. You know, we're closing in on the two leaders, the France and Great Britain, and I think we might be able to get France to maybe like us. If we rival Great Britain, right, if we end the customs union and then rival them, that should be, like, a pretty good spot to try and you know, get in on the UK. Of course, we will have a huge amount of pain once we end the Customs Union, but now that this is kind of toning down, maybe we can get into that. But we, like, we're incurring, like, just a massive problem by this 88%, right? Uh, and it's just, they can't support the convoys getting over here, so. And so, here we are. I think that's a big pro I, I think that's the big source of the problem. We just have so much more new output that they just don't have the convoys to support this whole network. Uh, and this 88% is incredibly, incredibly bad for us. Um, and so that's, that's probably what we'll be doing. Now we're making money because we're not constructing, right? Yeah, that's why. Rip the dream. Rip the dream of making money some other way. Okay, uh, we're just going to take a look and we see we're going to play a little bit of whack-a-mole. Uh, as soon as we see anything that is, uh, or I guess we don't need that many. We are looking to push economies of scale throughput bonus uh, up to max. And so that's what we're trying to do here. We're just finding places, any place that's above 30, we're just going to have 51 in. Okay, I think this was the next closest, but we are—we don't have a lot of wood ourselves, so we'll do this. We're also researching steel frame buildings, right? So building up the steel makes a whole lot of sense. I think we're doing it now in a couple places. Steel frame building, of course, requires glass as well. We live in a society. Okay, uh, you guys could use a little bit of help on that. We'll just put that in there and glass. And we'll add a few of railroads. Although I don't think we'll be able to like wholesale swap everything to steel frame instantly. I don't think this is in the cards. What is this? Is Austria also fighting Tripoli? We don't like that. We get protected speech, which of course now we're running this problem even again. And the minus five oppo approval is not something we can do. So we're going to do that. And we're just going to keep our... Uh, 
encourage manufacturing here in Punjab. We have done all the most progressive things. Um, protected speech is notably like one of the ones I don't always do, but I think because we want to pass catch up on tech, this 25% tech spread is going to be a huge deal. Um, it is very uncomfortable though. Uh, we could try and do this. It will make the industrialist big sad. We might just be in chill mode just because we want to kind of we care about approval rating of these various groups uh, more so than anything at this point or more so than any one of these laws really unless we wanted to go into graduated which we can't yet um, although notably after ironclads is ironclads not spreading to us it's not after ironclads uh we could go for socialism and uh the next tax level so maybe that's the plan about to hit two milli gdp <sighs> hot we love to see it of course this is man are we deficit spending a lot uh, but this is fine we could even uh swap over to steel frame and delete a bunch of construction centers at the same time this is an option uh, and this rev is going away the country is healing it's healing big nice all right, so we're going to call it an episode here. We have had a huge pop-off in terms of GDP. Um, we've come from, like, we've added, like, 75 million, so, like, 60% up on GDP. A big part of it is just on the backs of, uh, you know, a couple technologies, which is uh, pump jacks and uh, also uh, mutual funds. These have been pretty critical Uh you know, for increasing our GDP. We are starting to reach a point, um, like a little bit following mutual funds. Uh, the investment pool is going to be starting to fall off, but it's still incredibly powerful. Um, and so this is going to be really good. Uh, next episode, we should have a pretty nice start just getting steel frame and feminism off the bat. And so hopefully we can make this number recover. And I think also what we're gonna be trying to do next episode is leaving the UK's market and seeing what that looks like. Maybe I'll take a look at what it looks like in the interim and see if it's a good decision or not, something like this. Um, I'm not 100% sure because you have you would have to go through like all the buy orders and sellers and stuff like this and we just can't support doing that. But we do have a few subjects. We have a decent amount of things, you know, going on for us, I think maybe we can support our own market. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good day.